Cracking y'all is Lombardicus Prime, and we're here to just uh, to discuss some things. And this should be a chat box heavy discussion. Um, I'll be in the chat box, kind of getting y'all's thoughts or whatnot. But uh, let me know. Boom, cowboy video, by the way. Um, you know, the reports came out this week. Uh, you know, that's along the lines of, hey, y'all, everybody getting fired. Nobody keys work. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I wanted to, because on, on like two live streams ago, I was like, man, I would really be upset if all my coaches got fired. Some of them should be fired. Some of them, I think, really did a good job, and they should be there for next year or at least have an opportunity uh, to – uh, try to get on with the staff of whoever the new head coach is going to be. So I decided to break down a video of the coaches I would like to keep and the ones that can go. All right. Um, with that being said, I just wanted to get into my comment of the week where I just found a comment that resonated with me that kind of, you know, uh, you know, that was dope or, you know, just, you know, was just kind of cool. Right. And Andrew B. A draft season is among us brothers and sisters because we have ladies that watch my channel as well. Uh, Andrew B, shouts out to you, man. I liked your comment with the shiny mud kip and the Avi. Salute to you, sir. I don't know if that's shiny. It's just funny looking. But, um, hey, you have the comment of the week. Salute to you, sir, because it is, in fact, draft season. So, um, hey, everybody get ready for that. But we got Cowboy Talk to get into right now, so let's get into that. All right, first thing first, Kellen Moore, I want to keep him. I'm going to be sick if Kellen Moore walks out of here, go to some other team, and be the best offensive play caller in the league. That'll, that'll, that'll just ruin my entire life. I hate it. You know, he came in as a first-year play caller, took this offense from being like 20-something in all the categories to like 1, 2, and 3 in all the categories. You know what I mean? And he's had his, his, his bumps and bruises along the way. Cool. But, bruh, look at what he did in the grand scheme. Look at how great he was as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Um, like Drake said, that they that they shout my failures, but they whisper my accomplishments. You know what I mean? If if Kellen Moore was good 80% of the year as a first-year play caller, and I'll give him more than that, I'll say about 91% of the year as a good play caller. But the handful of plays that people didn't like, they want to push him off a bridge for that. As a first-year play caller, I think Kellen Moore did fantastic. I see the respect surgeons that he that, that he uh that he pulled off in his offense in terms of reading freezing people at the line of scrimmage um checks and adjustments movement things like that all the things that people wish they wanted they got and now they goofy ass trying to kick Kellen off a bridge i'm not having it man uh bring that kid back next year Mark Colombo, I had to pull some numbers on my offensive line. Last year, we had 58 total sacks, uh, including two in the playoffs. That's 58 total. Um, and it made me sick. I hated it. It made me go on this crusade to, to draft offensive linemen. You know what I mean? And they're much better this year. The number is 23 sacks this year that offensive line has improved with. Uh, we, we have a 23 total. Now, I'll be doing a film session breaking those down just like I broke the entire 58 down last year. And, um... And we'll break it down by whose fault were these 23 sacks on? You know, which offensive lineman? Was it on Dak? Was it nobody's fault? Was it just a freak occurrence? You know what I mean? Uh, did somebody run free? I'll be breaking down those sacks pretty soon. But uh, whatever changed between that time, I don't know how much Colombo did or did not have, um, you know, how much he had you know how many hands he had in that change or whatnot but uh it did in fact change i know it's a it's a combination of whatever it is that happened with colombo and Kellen moore also uh getting the ball out of the quarterback's hands a lot e uh, 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 faster quicker easier so um all those things lower the the sack number so let's get even better to lower that sack number a little bit more uh colombo in my opinion you are safe john kitna Right. Well, we see Dak, Dak, uh, Dak Prescott with the better footwork. Uh, the um, the um, throwing mechanics are better. We see Dak throwing from different platforms now. We see Dak a lot more accurate on the move. And, you know, a lot of people want to want to get into Dak's inaccuracies at the end of the year. Well, Dak used to be inaccurate all season. You know what I mean? But now he had a little fracture in his in his uh, in his throwing in his uh, planning finger, his index finger on, on his uh, throwing hand. And he had a throwing shoulder issue, of course. Of course, Dak is going to have some inaccuracies at the end of the year. 
Um, but for the most part, I think the the work John John Kidna put in on Dak, and plus he like he he made Dak like let it rip, like hey Dak, let that shit rip, you know what I mean? And Dak became a much more um, accurate, a much more active deep ball passer this year. So uh, in my in my personal opinion, John Kidna ain't going no. Gary Brown is like the Zeke whisperer or whatever, you know. And you know Gary ain't got to do too 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 much, but just um keep Zeke going. And you know I don't see any um I don't see any evidence of Tony Pollard being bad or anything or the other running backs uh that we've had you know I, I don't know how much a running back coach really does i've never really been around too many running back coaches but uh hey if he's gonna be the motivational zeke whisperer as long as we got zeke hey keep gary brown around it doesn't really matter to me but uh like i say keep him if we're gonna have zeke and doug nussmeyer he's the tight ends coach sure but i think he had a lot of input on how the offense is going to run you know what i mean um i think he was a quarterback a quarterback's coach in alabama or whatnot so he was another guy that was in that quarterback room with Dak, teaching Dak quarterback uh quarterback ropes and um whatever we got to do to make Dak the best quarterback he could possibly be then let's do it because that's how you win ball games in this league um so i'm all about that uh now he's the tight ends coach and you know you may feel a certain way about tight ends on this you know on this team but i think that's because jason Witten got too many reps you know what i mean i think if jason Witten retires and blake jarwin gets the majority of the reps and you know dalton continues to evolve as a blocking tight end maybe we'll, we'll uh you know draft another guy to come in and do tight end type things you know i think we're 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 fine there so nussmeyer in my opinion his job is safe for what he does to the greater good not just the tight end position my cable bill was way too high. I reached out to AffordableSticks.com. They sent me a fire stick, plugged that thing into the HDMI. Now I get unlimited shows, movies, and live TV. I'm a huge sports fan, so I love League Pass, Sunday Ticket, and I get the pay-per-view fights for free. That's something for the whole family. You can buy a fire stick for every TV in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable. That's AffordableSticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. Cut the cord, man. And on that note, we cue Crossroads. Uh, Keith O'Quinn can go. If you're the special teams coordinator, we were the worst special teams unit in the league. Now, look, if we were the worst <laughs> last year and we like 28th this year, you know what I mean? Then, I, you know, just geez, you know what I mean? Like maybe you got a better shot of keeping your job, dog. But we went from like a pretty solid special teams unit to the worst special teams unit. And we lost games based around special teams, you know, play or whatever. Hey, man, Keith O'Quinn can go, man. Belichick found a whole matchup taking advantage of um of um keith o'quinn and his uh you know his 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 lack of adaptability or lack of teachings in the special teams uh portion of the game he can go yesterday that's just my opinion uh ben bloom the linebackers coach there was some word on the road that ben bloom got into some beef with brother chris richard i don't know for sure because i'm not a reporter i'm just saying what i heard on the radio and those people are a little closer to the organization than i am i heard that ben and and uh you know brother brother uh chris shar had a little bit of beef brewing there so uh, hey man you know and you know besides that though besides that though uh van Der Esch and jalen smith they you know i think they took a step back instead of a step forward this year i think both those players are young enough to where they should still be stepping forward but they didn't trust their technique a lot they didn't trust their eyes a lot you know they they seem like they were guessing a bunch and a lot of that came from linebacker play and you know uh, if you look at the linebackers in indy um where our last linebacker coach uh went uh matt eberflus you know those 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 guys look a little better over there you know what i mean but uh, you know like I said, if those guys take a step up and ours took a step back, then that just says to me that Ben Bloom can absolutely get pushed off a bridge. That's just my thoughts. Um, another thing I heard from the Dallas Cowboy uh, radio networks, like I said, I'm not a reporter. I'm not there, but I heard that uh, that Amari Cooper and Sanjay Law wasn't really getting along. I got another notion, too. I, I mean, this could be totally, like, wrong and just random out of nowhere, but... Um, you know, like if you watch the training camp video, Sanjay Law had the receivers carrying around bricks and stuff. And I don't think we had that many drop issues until he had our receivers carrying around bricks and stuff. I may be mentioning stuff out of out of nowhere for no reason, but I don't know that that did kind of <laughs> it did kind of just happen. I don't, I don't know how, you know, how real that thing is. But Amari Cooper and Sanjay Law didn't get along and Cooper doesn't talk much. So, I, you know, he doesn't seem like a type of person that will get, get into beef with anybody, but. Um, in the Eagles game, when Cooper wasn't on the field, you know, it, it, it was because Sanjay pulled him out. 
You know what I mean? It, it was because Sanjay just didn't want to have him on the field or whatever. So I'm trying to keep Coop on this team. And if Sanjay Law don't work on this team while Coop is on this team, then Sanjay Law can go. You can um, you can make him fall on some sharp. You can chop his head off at the stake. Um, you know, push him off. You know, push him off the uh, off the uh, plank. Whatever you want to do, but uh, he can in fact go. You know what I'm saying? Papa Rod, man, I'm a huge fan of Papa Rod Marinell. I think he's one of the greatest D-line coaches of all time. I've seen him take nothing and turn it into sugar. Um, you know, I just think it's, it's just it's just past his time, man. It's just it's just past his time. Now I stood on the table for him. I really like Rod Marinelli, man, but I think it's past his time. Uh, so you know, assuming we get a new, I would like for our new coach to be like defensive minded or whatever. Maybe he brings in his defensive people. And it's interesting that that most of the coaches I want to push off a of bridge like they're all defensive guys, right? But you know, spoiler alert, but whatever. Um, Papa Rod, man, I've seen you do it for years. I've seen you do it for years. I know that that this title defensive coordinator was just, you know, for the show and the, the politics or whatever. Um, but you were really just the the D line coach and play calling was put up on somebody else. But uh, goodness, bro, goodness. But I think it's time though, Papa Rod. You were a fearless warrior your entire career. But uh, got to get you up out of there, Papa Rod. We got to get us another D line coach in there. Uh, Leon Led is the assistant, so you know. Maybe he goes with you. I don't know. Maybe somebody else new come in. But brother Chris, boy, oh boy, I seen a lot of people jump off ship, man. I seen people jump off the Titanic, bro. But I've never seen cowboy fans jump off a ship this fast uh, from when they brought in brother Chris, and you know because he was a little louder than people, they wanted him to be the next head coach, and then all of a sudden his defense takes a plummet. Now they want brother Chris to get about the paint. You know what I mean? I'm not really the one for anointing, you know, brand new coaches anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like I would have to 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 see it first. You know, kinda like me seeing the offensive line improve. Okay, cool. I will give Colombo credit. Seeing the O line improve, seeing the I mean, uh, yeah, seeing the offense improve, the, the quarterback improve, I give those coaches credit. The defense kinda got worse since Brother Chris has 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 gotten here. You know, and if he's the one teaching teaching Cheeto or teaching our DBs to not get their head around, I kinda don't want that to be a thing neither. If our cornerbacks are clearly man cover cornerbacks and they're forced to play um, like these cover three zones or whatever, you know, I, I, I'm trying to get that up out of here. Um, I'm not trying to necessarily transition into a three, four type of team. Not really. I'm not trying to, trying to you know, do all that, but, uh, I would like a little bit of diversity in my offense. I would like a little bit of create my defense, pardon me, a little bit of diversity in my defense. I would like some creativity in my defense and brother Chris Richard and Papa Rod together. They have not put that, um, put, put that together for me. So, um, Hey, Chris, I feel you, famo. But uh, if you think about it, man, you 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 had a you 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 were praised because of what you did in Seattle. But you know, Dan Quinn kind of put those guys in place. You know, uh, and, and then plus, you know, you know, you 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 coaching Sherman and Chancellor. You're you're coaching Earl Thomas and whoever the hell the other cornerback was. You know, the year at the time, because that second corner would change out a bit. You know, what I mean, of course, you would have success with those guys. You know, so hey, man, maybe our, our next D coordinator, DB coach, can uh, you know, I don't know, maybe they put some legs on the grits next time. But uh, brother Chris, we gotta, you know, what I'm saying, chop your head off and push your body in the ocean, dog. Brother Jason, man. Brother Jason, brother Jason. <sighs> brother Jason, brother Jason, brother Jason. I think you're a great head coach, brother Jason. I think you are a great, great head coach, brother Jason. I just think at this point, you wasn't the coach to put us over the uh, over the hump that we were trying to get over. You know, a lot of uh, Cowboy fans are going to talk shit about brother Jason in which they're going to say he's a bad coach. I don't think he's a bad coach because I think he can turn a bad football team into a good football team. And to be fair, if you think about it, Jason did that. He took the Wade Phillips teams and turned them into good teams. It's just that at this point in the Cowboy team career or whatever, we're trying to go from good team to Super Bowl team. You know what I mean? And Jason just may not have the 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 extra – the extra stuff to uh, put us over and turn us into a Super Bowl team. A lot of people seem to forget this though, because they they remember all of my pro Garrett talk, but they seem to forget that at the beginning of the season, what I said was, "Hey man, Jason's my guy." But if he can't get it done this year, then shit, then, he, then it's just gonna be written on the wall. It's just he's just gonna have to go. You know what I mean? And that's just what it is. That's just where the vibes are. Um, 
man, somebody find that, uh, find that, find that clip where I said that because I did say it. And I remember saying it a few times because people made me mad when they uh, only take half of what I say and not all of what I say. Something else too, my whole fight about Jason Garrett was just me fighting Cowboy fans. You know what I mean? It was just me fighting with them. I don't think Jason Garrett always been a bad coach. I just think that after he couldn't do it this year, I think that was the problem. Um, but Cowboy fans will blame things on Jason Garrett. I just feel like they, that he shouldn't have been blamed for. Um, you know, like how the things, how things were going on offense, like stopping the run, you know, things, you know, like, uh, uh, like receiver drops, like they would blame those things on Jason. I didn't think that, you know, he needed those things to be blamed on him. There are other things that could be blamed on him in terms of how much a player plays, you know, in terms of, um, out scheming another coach, things like that, you know, he, that he, you know, that he wasn't really, um, he wasn't really great at or whatever, but. Hey, man, you couldn't get it done this year. We have got to chop your head off. Game of Thrones voice. Ned Stark says that if you cast a sentence, you must swing the sword. And we will be swinging the sword. R.I.P. fam. Uh, you're going to go to the Giants and make them an 8-8 team. And, <laughs> and we're going to beat the shit out of the Giants. And, you know, Cowboys fan be like, look, <laughs> we did it. Or you're going to go to the Giants and make them a playoff team and they start beating the shot at us. I don't know. Well, whatever ends up happening, brother Jason, uh, salute to you, famo. But uh, it's time to chop off your head, famo. And um, I don't think there's a there's a dragon in, in Tamriel that's going to swoop in last minute and save your life on this one, my guy. Salute to you, dude. Um, with that being said, though, I appreciate y'all for listening. Keep up with my Patreon, Vach Lombardi, on Patreon. Uh, you know, follow me on Twitter. My Discord link is in the description. My Instagram is all Vach Lombardi, V O C H L O N B A R D I. And um, stay tuned for the live for the live uh, the live streams and uh, the the draft talks and the other little think pieces I got on the way. I'm gonna break down the uh, entire roster at some point, or at least the positions on the rosters at some points. Okay, y'all hold down for the Doski Walski man. Till next time. After canceling my cable, I saved twenty four hundred dollars this year by switching to Beast TV through ChannelsForCheap.com. Some people pay two hundred plus dollars a month. I paid one twenty a year, or you can go fifteen a month if that's what's convenient for you. You get twenty five hundred HD channels. A thousand of those are in English, and there are plenty of other international channels. TV Guide, and we get all the sports. One of my favorite things is multi screen feature. So if I don't know what I want to watch, I can tune into four different channels at one time. That you can watch on four different devices, and it's available on Fire Stick, smart TVs, tablets, and if you're on the go, you can watch TV on your phone. Hit the link in my description or go to channelsforcheap.com where you can get a free seven-day trial. That's a whole week for you to just sit down and play with it and see what you like about it. Then come back and make a purchase. If you have any questions, go to channelsforcheap.com. Hit this little button right here and they'll respond to you immediately. That is channels4cheap.com. The link is in the description. I highly recommend it. Let's do it. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.